Michelle Minori. Welcome to my tiny kitchen. I'm going to show you how to make carrot top tagliatelle with braised chicken, carrots, and oranges. Um, this is very similar to a dish that I made on the first episode of Top Chef Season 16, if you've been watching. Um, and we're going to make everything from scratch. So uh, I really love carrots and I love using the whole carrot. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And we have these beautiful carrots right here. I think it's really important to use the whole vegetable. And so we're gonna take the green part, the tops, to make the dough. So that's gonna be the base of our hydration. So if you can't find carrots with the tops, you could always use spinach or something. Um, these are really beautiful carrots. They're called um, nantes. I'm not really sure if that's how you pronounce it, but <laughs> um, they have a really delicate skin and they're really sweet and tender. So I'm not even gonna peel these carrots. They're fine like that, but I need to peel the green tops off <laughs> and uh, and cook them in some boiling water just for a few seconds to soften them up and then I'm gonna puree that with some egg yolks to be the base of our pasta dough. Okay so we have the carrot tops. Um, my stove is from the 70s but it still works fine. Um, I just boiled some water with salt. Um, I have carrot tops and I did get a little bit of spinach to kind of bulk it up a little because once I cook this it's going to shrink down to almost nothing. So add all your green stuff to the pot here. Um, and really you just want to cook it for a few seconds to kind of soften everything up. That's going to allow us to puree it with the egg yolks. And it seems like a lot but it's pretty simple. Um, as long as you stay organized and clean in your kitchen. All right, so these are nice and soft. Really takes a few seconds. Try to get all that water out. And then I just plunge it straight into some ice water from the fridge. Because you want to shock the green stuff that's cooking so that it stays nice and green when you puree it with your egg yolks. Normally, when you make pasta dough, you would just use egg yolks, but we want to use the whole carrot and I really feel that brings nice herbaceousness to your pasta and respecting the whole carrot by using the whole thing. So once it's here, I'm just gonna squeeze all this water out and puree it with some egg yolks. So I have all the greens here. I've just kind of squeezed out that water squeeze it into a little ball. And then whichever food processor you have, if you have a nice blender, just kind of throw them in there. Um, I've got about 250 grams of egg yolks. That's about 11 yolks, so almost a full dozen of yolks. I'm just gonna put them in the blender and puree it until it's smooth. the dough now before we start the chicken so that our dough can rest. Um, the main part of resting pasta dough is so that it absorbs all the hydration and the salt that you just put into it. So I have about 350 grams of double zero flour I'm using caputo. You can find it at Whole Foods Market or wherever you shop in the Italian section. Um, that's about like four cups of flour. Um, to that, I add just a pinch of salt, about a half a tablespoon. I always add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil uh, to keep the dough nice and silky and kind of smooth. So just add that to your mixing bowl. I use a KitchenAid. You can just use a mixing bowl with a fork or a spatula and mix it by hand. It works the same way. You didn't always have fancy machines. So put it on low, kind of mix all of that together. And while that happens, you're going to take your green egg yolks and slowly drizzle it in. You want to yeah, look from the top. It's going to be all of our color and all of our flavor, nice herbaceousness. 
it's important that you add everything really slowly. Kind of wait for that to hydrate a little bit. You want the flour to slowly absorb those egg yolks until it almost looks like wet sand. And you kind of want to go slow here. It's going to save you a lot of time and heartache in the long run if you take your time right now. So I'm just going to pause it really quick so you can see it. It looks just like wet sand. Okay, so turn it back on low. Keep adding your egg yolks. And I understand that making handmade pasta can be kind of scary, but it's really only like three ingredients. You have your eggs, you have your flour, and you have some salt. I chose to add olive oil and carrot tops. <laughs> um, but we've been doing it for hundreds of years, and it's super impressive you can do this for your, uh, your friends or your family. It just takes a little bit of time. And if you've ever made anything with flour before, you know it's kind of finicky. Some days it wants less hydration, some days it wants more. Today I think it wants more. So I'm going to add some more eggs to this. One. <laughs> okay, so I have some more egg yolks. I'm just going to add them. Uh, I'm just going to slowly add them until all the dough comes together. Kind of gathers around the paddle of the machine. You can hear the machine is working a little bit harder too. Starting to form some large clumps. I want to give it a little more so not to work too hard. There we go. Okay, I don't want to hurt the machine. I'm turning it off. Um, if you have a KitchenAid, just switch to your um, your hook right now. Um, that will just make it a lot easier for you. If you have a sad little wrist like I do, you don't want to hurt your hands, use the machine. <laughs> Okay, you can see it's definitely hydrating. It's a really beautiful green color. I'm really happy with the color. Just gonna turn it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna let it mix until it starts to catch on itself. There you go. You can kind of tell it's starting to make a little dough there. And it's always going to look a little more dry than you want it to because it needs time to hydrate. Dough's like us. Sometimes it needs a 20 minute break to suck in all that moisture and just relax. off. And I'm just working on a cutting board here. I'm just going to grab the dough. It feels really nice. Um, it feels like a really great hydration. And sometimes when you're making pasta, it's all about the feel. So you can see it's like a nice mass. It looks pretty shaggy. Um, that's why when you, you know, watch people make pasta, they always go through this process, which is the kneading process. Um, Pasta is made out of flour, which has gluten, and the more you work it, the stronger your gluten will become. And as you do that, it's going to get nice and smooth. So I'm just going to knead it for a couple of minutes until it gets nice and smooth. Okay, so I've been kneading this for about two minutes. You can kind of see it's much smoother than it was in the bowl. You push it in. And it gives back a little bit, but it's nice and green and smooth. I kind of just flatten it into a little disc here. And then I'm going to wrap it in some plastic wrap. If I wrap it nice and tight, um, that's going to keep the air out so it won't get a crust or anything. It will be nice and smooth. And we're just going to let it rest for a few minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to start the chicken. So I have about a pound of chicken thighs here. And I'm just gonna season it pretty liberally with some salt. 
I like to use um, just like a fine sea salt. Um, you can use kosher salt. And um, I also have a really lovely uh, Ethiopian Berber spice. So you can make this at home if you have some spices handy. It's just a mixture of uh, chili, paprika, a little fenugreek and cumin, coriander. I put ginger and um, cardamom. So some nice spices there. It's gonna have a nice warm flavor. So this is nice and seasoned and we're just going to cook this in a pan with some oranges, which I'm gonna show you a fun way to cut oranges right now. Okay, so I like to use oranges when I cook. Uh, any kind of citrus, it adds a nice freshness. Um, this is kind of a fun way to cut oranges if uh, you're working with them in the kitchen. So we just cut the tops off so it's nice and safe and flat. Uh, then you take the pointy part of your knife and just cut the peel around it like so. And you want to try and get all of that pith off because it's a little bitter. And you can always save the pith um, if you're making like marmalade or anything at home. You can still use it. Um, so then just hold the orange in your hand, take a sharp knife, and cut in between the segments just like this. You have all these beautiful little pieces of flesh and then you can take whatever's left over and just squeeze the juice out which is what we're gonna do. I feel like it's really important when you're cooking to try and use everything. Don't be wasteful. Plus there's flavor in every part of the vegetable. This orange is full of sweet juice that's gonna go really great with our chicken. So we have these little segments cut. I'm gonna save this for the juice. And then I'm gonna show you how to cut the carrots. Um, these carrots are super tender. Um, they're really young, they have a really thin skin, so I'm not even gonna peel them. I just made sure that I, I clean them really well. Um, I scrub the skin super well. Um, so I'm just cutting it into manageable sized pieces here like little batons, and then kind of just turn the carrot as you go, little sideways turn, whatever size you want. You can cut them into cubes, um, but I'm just gonna cut all these carrots and then we'll start cooking our chicken. Okay, so this is how we're gonna cook our chicken. I have a hot pan, uh, it's pretty shallow. I'm just adding a little bit of olive oil. Um, you can tell it's hot because it's nice and shiny. So just take your chicken thighs, place them in this hot oil. You want to hear them sizzle. And we're just going to sear these until they're nice and golden brown. That's it. Smells nice and toasty. Okay, I'm just going to let them sit there for a minute and do their thing. So these have been cooking for about two minutes on each side. And you know they're ready to come out when they don't stick to the pan anymore. So it comes off nice and easy. I'm just going to put them aside just for a second because I want to roast these carrots slightly just to get them on the heat. So I have our carrots ready here. And I'm just going to add these to our pan. And I'm going to stir those around. Um, there's all of that beautiful spice and to spawn from the chicken stuck to the bottom of our bowl. So this is where your oranges come in handy. You just want to squeeze all that leftover juice in there. And that will kind of deglaze all of the fawn. Okay. And just scrape that away. Scrape all that flavor off the bottom. We'll add the chicken back in and we're going to braise the chicken so that just means it's a moist type of cooking with enough liquid to almost cover it so lots of chicken stock that's going to be the base of our sauce so we'll just come to a boil and cook for about 20 minutes or so until it's nice and tender uh, meanwhile we can roll out our pasta 
Okay, so I've let the dough rest and wrapped it. I'm going to just cut a little piece off and show you how to roll it. Um, you can always do this just with a rolling pin if you don't have a pasta roller at home, or you can find one of these online. Um, they're super easy to use, just clip them to a table or a counter. Um, so I have a little bit of the pasta flour. Um, a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, you could use a bottle of wine or something. Um, and just roll this as thin as you can get it by hand, just so it's easier to fit through the machine. So I don't want to break my machine. So I always start in the middle of the dough and roll up because you have more power that way. Um, you can see the dough is nice and smooth and really beautiful in color. Mostly just from those carrot tops. Looks really nice. Um, so I'm going to move my cutting board over just a little bit. And if you can see, I have this really cool pasta roller. I'm just going to put it through the thickest setting and start rolling. You always want to start on the thickest setting. Always do it a couple times first. And then just take it down a little by little. A little thinner each time. The hard part about making fresh pasta is to try to get it to have some toothsomeness or like an al dente texture. Um, but as long as you have a really strong dough and you keep it to the right thickness, um, you have a really nice texture. So just speed it in with your left hand, roll it out with the right. It's going a little thinner each time. Um, on most pasta rollers, you want to go to like number two on the settings. So it's not too thin and it's not too thick. And really, if you have the time and the energy to make pasta by hand, a little goes a long way. So, this is the, the way I was taught to check if pasta's thin enough and you blow on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, just spray it back over to your board. I have some semolina flour, which is made of um, durum wheat. It's just a, a thicker, or I'm sorry, like a stronger flour, higher protein. Uh, it has a very really coarse texture, almost like ground rice or something. So just cut it up. Um, and you can, you can do this by hand. Just fold it. Always cut a little bit of the end off and just cut it into little strands, like so. I like to use some molina flour for this because I feel like it really helps keep the, the noodles nice and separate. It's also gonna help absorb moisture. So if you're looking for that al dente texture that most of us really enjoy when we eat pasta, the semolina is gonna help a lot. It's gonna absorb a lot of that leftover moisture. So. So you're gonna sit here and dry out maybe like five minutes um, while the chicken's cooking and uh, maybe we'll have a glass of wine or something while we wait. Okay, so we have some water, it's boiling. Uh, we need boiling water to cook our pasta. I just have some um, rock salt, like large crystal sea salt. Just season it so it tastes like the ocean. You want a lot of seasoning in your water. Flavor your pasta. These are our noodles. We still have gotten a little, a little bit of dryness and texture just from sitting out for about you know, 20 minutes while our chicken cooked. So we're gonna add this to the water. Going to stir it up. And fresh pasta only takes about like two or three minutes to cook. Super fast. So in the meantime, we just want to check on our chicken, which is. Um, the liquid has reduced a little bit and it's nice and tender so you can see it's it's really falling apart that's perfect that's exactly how we want it Oops, that's hot. <laughs> um, so we're just gonna put some in the pan and we want some of the cooking liquid in here to make a sauce so take some of this nice Cooking liquid has all that flavor. Maybe a little too much. 
And see how all this starch is coming out of the pasta water? That's really good stuff. That's all kinds of flavors in the pasta. So I always use that when I'm cooking a pasta to build some body in the sauce. <coughs> so that's beautiful already. Um, I'm just gonna put like a little nub of unsalted butter in the pan to kind of emulsify. Give me one more for a good luck. Um, emulsify into a sauce here. You can use olive oil or you can leave it as is. Um, so, just, just gonna heat it. Turn it up a little bit so you have nice little shreds of the spiced chicken thighs with some of the roasted carrots. Um, pasta's still cooking. Looking good, it needs a little bit longer. And then I'm just gonna toss in a few segments of that orange that we chopped up. Um, that's not really something you think of with pasta, uh, but it'll be a nice little surprise when you're eating. A little brightness. I also took some of the, the zest from the oranges and the lemon. So I'll kind of throw that in there to brighten it up as well. I like to cook the pasta about 90% of the way in the water and 10% of the way in the sauce. So um, you can just grab a little piece of pasta. So it's a nice chew. You don't want to overcook it. It's going to keep cooking in the sauce. So it's still nice and beautiful bright in color, has a little bit of an herbaceous taste from the herbs, so just toss it in your sauce. You can see all those pretty little orange segments. a little squeeze of lemon, a little pinch of salt, always taste your food. Come on, that's a pretty generous portion of some, some handmade carrot tally tally with Berber braised chicken thighs, carrots, and orange. gonna finish it off with a little sprinkle of sumac, one of my favorite dried berries, for a little bit of zestiness. And that's it. Thanks for watching.